many of you didn't. So we thought you'd like to see some of the action. We also thought you might enjoy seeing some of the activities, the planning, and the work necessary for appearing in a major postseason ball game. You know, you just don't get invited to a bowl, catch a plane, and go. There must be practice, plans, and preparation. The players vacation, like the other students. They stayed in Gainesville, and while most of us were knocking each other around doing last-minute Christmas shopping, the Gators knocked heads and shoulders, getting ready for the Missouri Tigers. Coach John Eibner takes time out to autograph a ball for graduating senior Dick Kirk who is preparing for his last game with the Gators. The team wasn't the only group pounding the turf. The university band had quite a few maneuvers to work out in preparation for the Sugar Bowl visit. Getting the pregame and the halftime shows in shape takes plenty of work. Coach Ray Graves supervised the practice sessions as the New Orleans trip approached. Number one out, 20 yard line. Blues, defense. finds the band still hard at work. After 10 days of steady practice, the players departed for Bayou Country, aboard this chartered Mackey Airlines plane. You have to make sure all the equipment is loaded, including items of the utmost importance.
You can see the flight was quite peaceful. Wonder what Steve Spurrier was dreaming about. Did visions of sugar bowls dance in his head? Back in Gainesville, someone else is getting packed to go too. Alligator experts from Homosassa Springs had some trouble, but subdued the creature. Albert V, the new gator mascot, is helped into his special glass cage for the jaunt to New Orleans. Homosassa Springs gave Albert V to the university following the untimely death of Albert IV, just after the Auburn game. Some said he committed suicide. It was down to earth for the Gators after a smooth flight. And a greeting at the New Orleans airport by fans. A jazz band. and Sugar Bowl officials. It didn't take long to assemble on buses for a speedy trip to the Big Bowl itself. Now a conference with Coach Graves. Let's practice some more. Once the team arrived, the Auden fans began to join them by train. University President J. Wayne Wrights and Mrs. Wrights. Alumni Field Secretary, Harold Dillinger. Dean of Student Affairs, Lester Hale and Mrs. Hale. Other university officials landed in New Orleans. Coach Hobe Husa. Vice President Robert Mouts, Registrar Richard Whitehead, Interim Alumni Services Director Alvin Alsobrook, University Relations Dean Alan Robertson, Business Manager William Elmore. More than 6,000 followers were on hand for the Gators' first out-of-state bowl appearance. Still more practice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See the one. Oh, well. A pause for publicity shots. That's Miss University of Florida on the right. Donna K. Berger of New Orleans. band managed to enjoy its share of extracurricular activity too, presenting a special show at the fairgrounds racetrack.
Gator Rooters, 1,500 of them, crowded into the Roosevelt Hotel ballroom for a big pep rally as New Year's Eve moved into full swing. The band played. The girls danced. And Albert had a particularly good time. One highlight of the rally was a surprise party for Dr. Wrights and Coach Graves. Both share the same December 31st birthday. Wonder what they wished as they blew out the candles. in New Orleans is really quite a sight. There's so much to do, so many places to go. The historic city greeted one and all. It seemed for a time as if everything was crammed into Bourbon Street. day dawned bright and warm. The crowd, which totaled better than 67,000 at the kickoff, showed up early to witness pre-game pageantry by the Gator Band and other musical units, as well as a parade of 20 beautiful queens from Dixie's Gulf Coast area and our Alba. Here come the Gators. Missouri won the toss and began an immediate dominance of the first quarter that didn't give the Gators much opportunity to display their high gear offensive attack. plays such as these that helped Missouri consume seven minutes on the clock before Florida held on downs at its nine. This Tiger defense stopped Jack Harper for a two-yard loss. The famed Spurrier to Casey combination gets a nine-yard gain. This Spurrier pass to Allen Poe, incomplete. Spurrier's 43-yard punt marked the last time Florida had possession in the opening 15 minutes. Missouri began the first touchdown drive after taking the punt at its 41. Halfback Charlie Brown kept the 59-yard march with his 10-yard scamper around left end. And Bill Bates added the conversion for a 7-0 Tiger lead. It didn't take long for Missouri to get on the scoreboard again. 
A punt to Jack Harper of the Gators appeared to be an easy, fair catch. But Harper bobbled it at the Florida 11, and the Tigers were again in business. A halfback pass from Johnny Rowland to Earl Denny, coupled with Bates' extra point, put Missouri in front 14 to nothing. There were a few first half bright spots for the Gators, even though they failed to score. This 40 yard strike from Spurrier to Casey brought a roar of approval from the crowd. And Casey looked just as rugged to stop at ground level as he did from the high-level camera view. A 37-yard field goal by Bates with less than two minutes to go boosted the Missouri Eds to 17 to nothing. It was a puzzle Ray Graves who left the field for the intermission, wondering how to defend against the Tigers. All that practice by the band paid off. The halftime show was one of the best of the year for director Richard Bowles' unit. Bowles introduced the Sugar Bowl March to the New Orleans crowd and a national television audience. And what more fitting finale could have been selected than We Are the Boys from Old Florida. As anyone who witnessed Florida football games in 1965 will freely admit, the Gators might have been down, but the game wasn't over. A third quarter field goal had shoved Missouri's gap to 20 to nothing when this key defensive stand gave Missouri a fourth and one at the Florida 14 in the opening stages of the fourth quarter. Quarterback Gary Lane couldn't gain an inch on the next play, and the Gators had new life at their own 14. Spurrier cranked up his trusty throwing arm for six straight completions in rushing the Gators 86 yards for a rapid touchdown. The pegs went to Barry Brown twice for 16 and for four, to Harper for two in a row that carried from the Gators 34 to the Tiger 31. to swift Richard Trapp for nine yards to the Missouri 22. Finally to Harper, speeding into the end zone. Let's see that catch again. A two-point try that didn't seem to matter at the time, with the Gators trailing 20 to six, turned out to be a controversial choice. It failed, 
Spurrier couldn't locate Trapp for the pass. Missouri gave the rebounding Gators a golden opportunity moments later, fumbling at the Tiger 11. Following a Spurrier pass to Harper for eight, Harper hit right guard before Spurrier took the mail himself for Florida's second score. Now two points was the only alternative. And again the Gators missed connection. This time on a faked placement with Alan Trammell tossing to Poe. With tackling such as defensive end Lynn Matthews number 84. It didn't take long for Florida to obtain the ball once more. It was plays like this, reflecting good second effort by Alan Poe, that kept Florida on the move in the late stages of the fourth quarter. Spurrier completed six of 11 heaves for 74 of the 81 yards in Florida's third scoring march, and got the remaining seven yards himself on a ramble up the middle when he found his receivers covered. This nine-yard toss to Brown got Florida to the Missouri 21. After two misses, Spurrier found Casey with this bomb that touched off a fuse in the Sugar Bowl. With a chance to tie, the Gators called the two-point play for the third straight time. Illegal motion against Florida erased any hope for the tie and left the 20 to 18 defeat instead. And so it was over. But everyone knew the Gators had been a part of the Sugar Bowl, just as did Georgia, Northwestern, LSU, Mississippi, North Carolina State, Tulane, and particularly Florida State. post-game banquet resulted in some comments from Coach Gray. some way to get our offense uh, going and maybe stop uh, the Missouri running game. And I know that uh, we played uh, 60 minutes and uh, we might have needed a few more minutes, but if it had gone a little longer, we might have wished it had ended when it did. But I would say that we are really proud of the boys. I was proud of the way they maybe uh, came back and made the uh, Sugar Bowl game a classic that uh, maybe the fans and everybody will remember. And, of course, uh, Dan doesn't have the problem I've got. I had five alumni playing for me, me today. <laughs> and they're going out, and this is a great group of seniors that are, have played their last game at the University of Florida. And I want to say that I'm proud of them, and I wish them Godspeed with the five boys that are leaving 
won't even return to campus, have graduated. We are proud of them, and we, of course, uh, we're just proud to be a part of this great class. And a Florida playoff provided one of the most moving events of the entire weekend. By some great football players. I would like to ask Steve Sparia to join me on the... today and uh, having to get here very early I didn't have time to dig into all the records that you broke but uh, I'm quite sure there were about four records that are now uh, owned by you in the Sugar Bowl history and I congratulate you very much before presenting you with this trophy uh, I believe that there would be a number of coaches in the Southeastern Conference that would gladly give you more than this trophy to get you out of the league because being a junior uh, I don't think that they relish the idea of facing you as a senior and it is now my Spuria, pleasure the quiet to son of a Presbyterian minister became the first player from a losing team to be named most valuable player of the Sugar Bowl game he established five records including completion of 27 passes in 45 tries for 352 yards and two touchdowns. He collected 16 of those strikes in the frantic fourth quarter and personally saw to it that the 1966 Sugar Bowl changed from a 20 to nothing route to a 20 to 18 thriller in the brief space of 15 fourth quarter minutes. We Gators are lucky to have a football team each of us can be proud of. One that won't quit. One that fights for us right down to the last second on the clock. Well, that just about does it. It's been fun being with you. I hope you enjoyed this reminiscence as much as I did. And this is the old redhead saying so long for now and hope to see you again next year.